Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Amanda, Right Out Health Coach, and here we are again with our favorite pharmacist, Ben Fuchs. And um, it's been a while since we shot our last informational how, how long, <laughs> video. How long has it been? Two months? I think it's going to be around two months or so, but wow. we are back and we're going to talk about eczema. Cool. Yeah. So, a lot of people, a lot of people will suffer from eczema. Yeah. Especially affects kids. And one of the reasons is, is because kids' immune system is not developed, and that's the secret to eczema. In fact, the secret to eczema is actually, uh, it's the secret to understanding eczema is actually revealed in the medicine they give you for eczema. What's the standard medicine they give you for eczema? I've never had it, so I don't know. <laughs> it's a, ster a steroid. Oh, okay. All right. It's like the a doctor, the dermatologist's main weapon is a steroid, right? Okay. A steroid cream. Or over-the-counter, what's the main thing you use for eczema? Hydrocortisone. So what does a steroid cream do? It suppresses the immune system. It's an anti-inflammatory, which is the same as an anti-immune system. The inflammatory uh, substance, the uh, inflammatory system is the calling card of the immune system. When you see inflammation, you have a defensive reaction. So immunity means defense, correct? Yes. I mean, you understand that concept? Okay. Seriously. Yeah. That's a, okay. Yeah. It's an important concept. A lot of people, you know, I never haven't thought of it that way, but immune, the immune system is your protective system. Yeah. Every system needs a protective system. It's a jungle out there. Right? You need to have some protection. Countries need protection. Cities need protection. Citizens need protection. Human right. bodies need protection. Plants need protection. Everything needs protection. And in the body, the protective, protective system is called the immune system, the defensive system. Eczema is a defensive response, the manifestation of a defensive response. It's the manifestation or the end result of chemicals that are involved in defense and protection. Okay. Okay. Is that, that's not hard. No. That's right. That's a common sense, right? Mm -hmm. So now, if you, I told you you're having a problem that's the end result of a defensive reaction, or if I told you your body's in a defensive posture and you want to change that, what would be the logical question to ask in order to change that? Well, what is offending my body? Now, that's logical, no? Right. That's not medicine. That's not science. That's logic. Mm. If you have a defensive response and you want to end it, you have to know what's causing the defensive response. Right. It's as simple as that. Now, in the body, defensive responses are typically caused by something that's floating around in the blood. And in the body, defensive, defensive responses are exacerbated by nutritional deficiencies. Okay. So defensive responses are turned on by something that's getting into the blood that's being perceived as an attack, and nutritional deficiencies are compounding it. Between nutritional deficiencies and some kind of offending agent that's chronically getting into the body, you have the cause of eczema and you have the clue to the cure for eczema. Okay. And when I say cure, I don't necessarily mean like magical, we think cures, oh, this magical yeah. you know, spell was cast or this genius doctor cured me. <laughs> no, what I'm talking about is reversing a process because disease is diseasing. It's not a noun, it's a verb. Mm -hmm. And nobody has eczema, their skin is eczematous or their skin is exem, ex, exem, exem, eczeming. It's a verb. <laughs> so void of, void of eczema? It's a verb. It's a verb. Okay. It's, it's, it's manifesting the action mm. of eczema, which is really technically called dermatitis. Okay. That's the tech. Eczema is a generic term. Eczema refers to a special kind of dermatitis. It's called atopical dermatitis. Have you ever heard of this term, yeah. atopical dermatitis? Okay. The other kind of dermatitis is contact dermatitis. Those are the two main dermatitises. There's a few different ones. The, the main two are contact and atopical. Okay. Atopical, that means not topically caused. Contact means contact. Atopical tells you in the name. Mm -hmm. It's not a topical issue. It's an internal issue. It's a blood issue. Okay. Now, how does anything get into the blood? Well, you can inject it, theoretically. That doesn't really happen. You can snort it, you know, inhale it occasionally. The lungs are very protective, rarely. Where's the vast majority of the point of entry into the blood? The digestive system, right. clearly. So eczema is an immune, uh, an immune disease. That means it's a defensive disease. The way you handle a defensive response is you look for the offending agent. In the case of eczema, the offending agent is going to be problems with foods and problems with malnutrition, especially the, mal, uh, the nutrients of building, okay. vitamin A, vitamin D, zinc, things that stabilize the movement of cells, that control how cells grow. Because have you ever seen eczema? It's a rashy condition where the barrier 
you know, you have a surface yeah. that's a barrier, it doesn't <clears throat> form very well. And the cells as they're growing, you know, we take for granted how incredibly organized the body cell growth really is, parts of, you know, the building blocks of the body. Cells grow in the skin from the bottom to the top, and as they're growing, they're going through this complex shape shifting. They're turning into different shapes and they're extruding different compounds and there's all this chemistry happening as they're rising. There's all this chemistry that's occurring. And, you know, we look at the skin and what? It doesn't look like anything's there. It looks right. like inert. Nothing's happening. It certainly doesn't look dynamic, right? You freak out if you could see the dynamic nature of the skin, <laughs> right? That would be a freaky. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, like that, right? right? But we really, it, not looking at it that way, not looking at it like an organ, allows us to do these ridiculous things like put steroid creams when we when we have this thing this process that really needs to be adjusted you know yeah. what i'm saying if you could start to see it as a process and and if we can override the tendency to not want to see the movement in there and just see it as a dynamic uh, uh, activity it's really it's really the skin is constantly changing really right before our very eyes the skin you have right now amanda isn't the same skin that you had when you started this video and that is right? Because it's constantly <laughs> shape-shifting. Mm -hmm. You may not notice it, but you see, this is power. If you believe the medical model, which says you have eczema, you all of a sudden have a disease. It's in your hand. Uh -huh. You have it. You own it. It's yours. It's your identity. I'm telling you, it's a process. And once you start to put the right things in the body and, and stay away from the wrong things, the process will change because that's the body's inherent way of being. It's not inherently eczematous. It's inherently healthy. Yeah. You're just doing, missing some stuff or doing the wrong things, and we just adjust it. So in case of eczema, foods are the big thing. Then supporting the digestive system. So do a food diary, eliminate problem foods, you know, the whole food diary thing. Right. Pro, probiotics are one of the best things you could have, maybe the best, maybe the single most important supplement for eczema is probiotics and fermented foods. Reestablish the gut flora. There's a very important relationship between vitamin D and probiotics and good bacteria. Mm -hmm. Good bacteria make probiotics or make, they, uh, support healthy probiotics, support okay. healthy bacteria. Sorry, vitamin D supports healthy probiotics. Okay. Vitamin D supports a healthy microbiome and vice versa. Microbiome uh, helps uh, stabilize and protect and activate vitamin D. So it goes back and forth. So uh, vitamin D, as it turns out, is also very good for eczema. That's why the sun is very important for eczema, making sure you're getting enough sunshine, making sure you're eating organ meats if you eat meat. Uh, if you don't eat meat, mushrooms are probably the best source of vitamin D, supplementing okay. with vitamin D, of course, as well. Uh, a, your major building vitamin. Whenever you remember, this is a building issue. Cells dividing. A and D go together always. They're both building substances. A and D tell the body that it's summertime on the African savanna, and we just killed a wildebeest, and we can <laughs> and we can expend our energy to make cells and to make tissue. The body is very economical. It's stingy. It is not going to expend its resources unless it knows there's income. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Vitamin A and D tell the body there's income. Okay. You know, there's plenty of meat. It's summertime. We got A and D aplenty because A and D are animal vitamins. Right. That means we're, we, life is good to the body so and to the cells as well and to the skin as well. So the cells of the skin start to grow and divide more appropriately. A and D topically can work too. Okay. Um, zinc is the same way. Another anabolic vitamin and another skin building vitamin. Uh, uh, internally, 50 milligrams a day of zinc, 20,000 IU of vitamin A, by the way. Uh, take your zinc and your vitamin A with fatty foods. They go together. If you had a gallbladder taken out, you have any problems with fat absorption, a liver problem, uh, intestinal problem, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, whatever, you may have to support fat absorption. You may have to support the ability of your body to get fats in. And then topically for eczema, topical vitamin C, fatty vitamin C, fatty, uh, vitamin, uh, fatty vitamin C, and then uh, vitamin D, which is already fatty, and vitamin A, A and D ointment. You can break open a capsule, as I was saying. Zinc oxide works too, make you a little bit white. Or you could take some zinc, pa uh, zinc capsule and maybe put it, in, uh, uh, put it in with a lotion or with some kind of topical product and make yeah. a zinc product with it. Uh, but it's, it's mo oh, and fats, EFAs, I forgot about that. Oh, EFAs, oh yeah, those are good. EFAs, very, very important for eczema skin, especially omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-6 fatty acids are, uh, are uh, pro-inflammatory. I don't want to say they cause inflammation, but they are lean the body towards inflammation. Omega-6 is towards anti-inflammation. and I'm sorry, omega-3s. And omega-3s tend to be deficient in the diet compared to omega-6s. Yeah. So getting omega-3s is probably a good idea. Fish oil is good for eczema. I know a lot of, I've seen a lot of really good results with fish oil, although that's not exactly omega-3s, which is something we might want to talk about on another program. Okay. 
So let me let me just uh, I should say, go back. It's not exactly an EFA. It's not exactly oh, okay. an essential fatty acid. It is technically an omega three. Let me go back and just say that all these nutrients are just in addition to already being completely neutrified with what we believe to be ninety essential. You have if you have eczema and you're on the ninety essential for life, you're missing something. Okay, and you're so not, you're you definitely want to look for more of these specific fats, nutrients. fats, fatty vitamins, and minerals, and the digestive component, the food component. Because remember, it's not what you take; it's what, what you, you absorb. absorb. Okay, right. and here's another thing: you said we need help breaking down those fats in our body, and I've had some people say, "But how? How do we do that? How do we? Ha how do you? How to uh, support? Maximize? That yeah." That should be another video. It should be. Should, should okay. we talk about it now? I think it's another video. Okay. Well, next then video. it will be our next video because that is important. I think some people. Well, I'll um, give you a clue. I'll get, we don't want to leave people hanging. It might yes. be a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> Less of thin. Less of thin. And would this be powder, liquid? Does it matter? The granules are probably better. Granules. Okay. Granules and organic and uh, non GMO, if you could find. Okay. So that's a start. But then uh -huh. we will go into depth. And yes. what does it look like, what we can do yes. to help because, break down the fats in our yes. body? Just, to, just to give you a little warm-up. I don't know if you want to keep this on the video or you want to cut it, but just a little bit of warm-up. Fats are for building and long-term effects. Water is for quick effects, sparks, energy. Ah. And they work together. Your sparks, your energy, that's all water-soluble. B vitamins, vitamin C, electrolytes. Yeah. Your long-term reactions, building and growth and immunity and fertility and creativity, all of those things, those are vitamin A, vitamin D, testosterone, uh, estrogen to a certain extent, fatty subs, cholesterol. This is why cholesterol, by the way, is so important. Okay. Cholesterol is part of this fatty complex that's responsible for making things grow. Okay, wonderful. Well, that, no more because no more. everybody's going to have to tune in next time okay, to good. listen to that. But um, I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to add, or is that sort of the gist that's, of eczema? I suggest digestion, fat absorption, fatty vitamins, okay. and minerals, eliminate problem foods, probiotics. Yeah. yeah and Fucoid Z, if you want to throw one thing, Fucoid Z, that's always Fucoid good. Fucoid Z, okay. Coats the digestive tract. Okay. Any of the, any of the polysaccharides, glucose, amino, gluco, uh, glucose aminoglycans, they call them. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, hyaluronic acid is one, chondroitin. You know, you'll see them on the glucogel caps. In fact... Now that you mention it, the glucogel caps, which we market for joints, cartilage. Are great for intestines and skin. And skin. Yeah. It's all the same stuff. Okay, good. Okay, wonderful. Well, remember everybody, it's not what is touching you most of the time. It's what goes into your mouth, what you're right. absorbing. So right. atopical dermatitis versus yes. contact dermatitis. And, and like pharmacist ben, ben just mentioned, we really need to be keeping those food diaries when we have these issues. So yes. all right. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Ben. Good it's to see you great again. seeing you too. And you have a wonderful rest of the week. Thank you, Amanda. Bye. Bye.